So we're coming back here one more time to this complete dependency of children on the caregivers. Um, we talked about it before, I can't repeat it enough. Uh, from a child's perspective, if the caregivers don't take care of the child, the child does not have the capacity to survive on its own. Um, and that's the situation all children find themselves in. And what that also means is that it's extremely scary and threatening for a child to recognize their caregivers as, as failing them. Just want to make this point clear again one more time because it's so fundamental. You know, From a child's perspective, this is how it feels or this is how it looks. If my caregivers don't have what it takes to protect me and attune to me and love me, then it's just going to be a, a very unsafe and threatening universe to be in, you know. Um, so that's the one thread. And the other thread, again, I repeat it, is that small children don't have a fully formed sense of separate psychological self yet. So what that means, and again, we talked about it yesterday, the logic is if it feels bad, then I must be bad, you know. Because of course it's going to feel bad to a child to be exposed to environmental failure. Um, so it does feel bad, it does feel scary and painful, it brings up all these feelings. Um, and what, of all that, what, what all of that means is that uh, a child is unable, this is another punchline for this, a child is unable to see themselves as a good person in a bad situation. It's impossible. Bad situation, bad feelings means I am bad or from the perspective of a small child. And that, of course, is the beginning of this way of thinking. Also, as another you know, threat to this, if it feels bad, then that must, must also mean that I deserve this. And you can see how this links directly with that development of toxic shame. So... It, <laughs> Another thing I want to talk about here briefly. So, so here's what the child then has to do in response to this kind of environmental failure. Um, because of the dependency, it's absolutely essential for the child to try and protect the relationship to the parents at all costs. Uh, the child needs to somehow find a way to be able to continue to trust and love their parents uh, so that there's hope that all is well you know, and that I'm somehow taken care of. So, so in order to kind of maintain that way of thinking, even when the parents are not doing their job well, the child then has to start doing what we call splitting. And splitting is an attempt to like protect the image of the parent as good, so to make the parent all good, but in the same uh, movement, make, I, I have to make myself bad. So that's the splitting. So in other words, the source of all the badness is in me so that the parents can stay good, which means there's hope left in the universe. There's the hope for goodness and for care and for love. One more time, this crucial understanding that's at the core of everything that NARM is about. Children learn to internalize environmental failures as personal failures. They make it their fault, and that then leaves them feeling like defective, unlovable, unworthy, disgusting, bad, all these different expressions of this fundamental toxic shame that they develop. And so what they're left with is this deep internal feeling of badness. And from this feeling of badness, all these patterns then of self-judging and self-criticizing and self-hating uh, develop from this feeling of badness.